Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, Crossing New Frontiers to Conquer Today's Challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8th, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine. I'm Philip Emagwale. The nine partial differential equations of modern calculus, called Emagwale's equations, began as the second law of motion of physics. I encoded that second law of motion into 81 partial derivative terms of Emagwale's system of equations that governs the multi-phase flow of oil, water, and natural gas that was flowing a mile deep and across a production oil field, such as the Oloibri oil field of Nigeria, that was, f that was the first oil field discovered in West Africa and discovered in 1956. As a research computational mathematician, I insisted that the petroleum reservoir simulator must obey the laws of physics at all times and simulations. My contributions to mathematical knowledge include the mathematical discovery that the system of nine coupled non-linear and time-dependent partial differential equations in the calculus textbooks of the petroleum industry. We are not equating to the reality within the oil field the partial differential equations represent. For that reason, I invented the nine Emma Aguilis equations that contained 36 partial derivative terms that equated with the four physical forces that exist within all production oil fields. Along those lines, I also had to invent nine finite difference algebraic algorithms that were not constrained by in inverted comma dependency and constrained when executing across my new internet that was outlined by an ensemble of 65,536 commodity of the shelf processors that were identical to each other and that were equal distances afar and apart from each other. A necessary condition for making my experimental discovery of the 4th of July of 1989 was that I simultaneously sent emails to all 65,536 processors on my new internet and that I synchronously received my email replies from all 65,000 536 processors. That massively parallel processing supercomputer invention took a narrative identity all its own, namely, I, the storyteller, became the story and the subject of school reports. Nine in ten supercomputer circles are executed while solving extreme scale systems of equations 
of algebra. On the 4th of July of 1989, the U.S. Independence Day, I experimentally discovered how to finesse, finesse my 64 binary thousand identical and commodity processors to email each other and to work together to reduce the time to solution of extreme scale systems of equations of algebra and to reduce that time to solution from 65,536 days or 108 years on one processor to just one day across an ensemble of 65,536 processors. I experimentally discovered how to compute quickly and accurately and how to make the impossible to solve systems of equations of extreme scale algebra possible to solve and how to use that new knowledge of massively parallel processing extreme scaled problems in algebra and doing so to build digital replicas of petroleum reservoirs and the Earth's climate. I experimentally discovered a new supercomputer that encircled a globe and encircled it in the manner the internet encircled a globe and that could be used to solve never-before-solved problems in algebra. That new supercomputer is a new instrument that enables the computational mathematician and physicist to answer previously unanswerable questions in the extreme scale algebra that is the recurring decimal in their grand challenge problems. By definition, algebra is the generalization of arithmetic. In high school algebra, the two, let two letters represent two numbers. In the supercomputer algebra that arises from trying to discover and recover otherwise undiscoverable and unrecoverable oil and gas, one trillion letters must represent one trillion numbers arising from a system of one trillion equations of algebra. Those one trillion equations are evenly distributed across millions of processors that in turn solves the trillion equations in parallel and solves them by computing one million calculations at once. In modern supercomputing, parallel processing is the disruptive technology that displaced sequential processing, a technology that established itself for half a century. Between sequential processing that was experimentally invented in 1946 and parallel processing that I experimentally invented in 1989 was vector processing that was the sustaining technology that yielded incremental gains in the supercomputer speeds of the 1970s and 80s. My world's fastest supercomputer algebraic calculations made the news headlines and entered into the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal. A week later, the computer and information technology writer named Judith Axler Turner wrote in the June 27, 1990 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education that I, Philip Emma Aguale, quote, 
took on an enormously difficult problem. Unquote. That enormously difficult problem that I solved and that made the news headlines was the toughest problem in extreme scale algebra. Judith Axler Turner continued in her Chronicle of Higher Education article that Philip Emma Aguale, quote, solved it alone, has won computation stop prize captured in the past only by seasoned research teams, unquote. I was in the news in 1989 because I experimentally discovered how to reduce the performance abyss between the sequential or the vector processing supercomputer and the massively parallel processing supercomputer. I did not experimentally discover parallel processing by merely tweaking sequential processing codes, I discovered the parallel processing supercomputer from first principles, from the laws of physics, from the partial differential equations of calculus, and from the partial difference equations of algebra. Algebra is the way the supercomputer experienced calculus. I experimentally discovered parallel processing by going back to the laws of physics that were encoded into the system of partial differential equations of modern calculus that in turn we are discretized to yield trillions upon trillions of a system of equations of algebra that I had to solve in parallel. My contributions to computational mathematics are these. I mathematically and experimentally discovered how to compute and solve initial boundary value problems that were previously impossible to solve. I discovered how to execute excruciatingly detailed petroleum reservoir simulations. Such extreme scale simulations in turn enable petroleum engineers to discover and recover otherwise undiscoverable and unrecoverable oil and gas. I discovered how to foresee otherwise unforeseeable global warming and how to do so by executing extreme scale general circulation models and how to do so by executing them at a never before seen resolution and executing them across my ensemble of processors that is a new internet and that is a new supercomputer de facto, but that is not a computer per se. The modern parallel processing supercomputer is not the sequential processing computer of the old sense and of the 1980s and earlier. Each modern parallel processing supercomputer is defined by the configuration of the ensemble of processors that outlined it. I invented a new configuration of processors that defined a never before seen supercomputer that I named the cosmic supercomputer and that outlined a never before seen internet that I described as a hyperbole global network of processors 
that is described by the book History of the Internet and described as a small copy of the Internet and described as the contribution of Philip M. Aguale to the invention of the Internet. My knowledge and experience with the, with the supercomputer began on June 20, 1974 at the Computer Center at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Corvallis, Oregon, United States. The computer has changed since it was invented in 1946 and invented as automatic programmable and, and, processing, and processing sequentially. But the way we define the computer has not changed. In 1946 and now, we still define the computer as the tool that enables a person to execute the fastest computations. Back in 1974, the prevailing dogma in supercomputing was that parallel processing will forever remain a huge waste of everybody's time. The paradigm shift from serial computing to parallel computing occurred in 1989. There were three reasons I couldn't make my 1989 experimental discovery of parallel processing in 1974. First, I didn't have, in 1974, the intellectual maturity across computational physics, across abstract calculus, across large-scale algebra, across extreme-scale computation, and across message-passing communication. I acquired that intellectual maturity during the next 16 years onward of March 25, 1974, of full-time study and supercomputer research. The second reason I couldn't discover parallel processing in 1974 was that I didn't have a global network of 64 binary thousand processors that I needed to use to reconfirm my theoretical discovery of parallel processing. I can only experimentally reconfirm my theoretical discovery across those 65,536 processors. The third reason I couldn't discover parallel processing in 1974 was that the fields of calculus, computing, and email communication grew enough to enable me to do my experiments and do it across a small copy of the internet that's a global network of 64 binary thousand processors. But more importantly, my original inspiration was to discover a new technology namely a small copy of the internet that emulates a new supercomputer that new technology that is a new supercomputer is a new instrument of extreme scale computational physics that's indispensable in the quest for oil and gas that's indispensable in foreseen otherwise unforeseeable global warming. And that's indispensable in vast and sundry problems in extreme scale computational physics. That the fastest supercomputer costs as much as the budget of a small nation is a measure of its wide applications across the sciences and society. Parallel processing 
is the technological engine that powers both the slowest computer and the fastest supercomputer. My discovery of practical parallel processing earned me the highest price in supercomputing and made the news headlines in 1989 and was newsworthy because it opened up the new fields of seeking parallel solutions of initial boundary value problems that occurs from mathematics to medicine, from biology to chemistry, and from astronomy to physics. When you are inventing something, that thing is yours. When you've invented that thing, you give that thing to posterity, and that thing is no longer yours. For instance, my experimental discovery of the massively parallel processing supercomputer was the cover story of technical publications such as the May 1990 issue of the Siam News of the Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. The Siam News is the flagship bi monthly news journal of record of the research mathematics community that is half a million mathematicians strong. At the Christ the King College, Onicha, of the then East Central State of Nigeria of 1970, I was the rising star in physics and calculus. For that reason, everybody at Christ the King College, Onicha, called me calculus rather than Philip. At Christ the King College, Onicha, my physics textbook was titled Advanced Level Physics. That physics textbook was co-authored by Michael Nelkon and Philip Parker. Those that knew me by the name Calculus at Christ King College, Onicha, Nigeria, we are not surprised that I won a scholarship that was dated September 10, 1973. That scholarship made it possible for me to arrive in the United States on Sunday, March 24, 1974. I spent my first night in the United States alone. I spent that first night in 36 Butler Hall, Monmouth, Oregon. An earlier turning point for me as a mathematician was in June 1970 at age 15 inside a bookstore near Dennis Memorial Grammar School on Icha, East Central State, Nigeria. The bookstore was a short distance from Zeke's roundabout on Echa. Inside that bookstore, I paid the then unheard of one pound and five shillings for a 568-page blue hardbound book that was titled An Introduction to the Infinitesimal Calculus. The calculus book was subtitled with applications to mechanics and physics. The calculus book was written by G.W. George William Count and published by Oxford University Press. The frontier of knowledge of physics, calculus, and algebra are the intellectual sorts that I used in my supercomputer quest for the then uncharted territory now known as the massively parallel processing supercomputer. That terra incognita of knowledge is where the fastest supercomputer exists and where I discovered how to harness my ensemble of processors as the building blocks of a new supercomputer. That new supercomputer is the precursor to the modern parallel processing supercomputer. I discovered how to harness those processors 
to solve extreme scale problems in algebra that arose in computational physics. I was the first person to witness the world's fastest algebraic computation that occurred across a new internet that was a global network of 65,536 processors. I witnessed that fastest algebraic computations at 10.15 a.m. New York time, Tuesday, the 4th of July of 1989, the U.S. Independence Day. That experimental discovery represents a new paradigm in the history of algebra. At first, I couldn't believe my fastest algebraic computations, and I believed that I had made a mistake in the manner I operated the internal timer that I used to time the speed of my new supercomputer. Everybody said I had made an embarrassing, embarrassing mistake, but everybody was embarrassingly mistaken. At my mathematical core, I'm also an extreme scale algebraist. It made the news headlines in 1989 that I, Philip Emma Aguale, discovered how to solve the largest system of linear equations of algebra and how to solve them at the fastest speeds but with the slowest processors. What I contributed to extreme scale fast computational mathematics was the cover story of top publications in mathematics. I discovered how to reduce the toughest problems in calculus to their acceptable approximations in algebra. I discovered those algebraic approximations as the most extreme scale problems in computational algebra. That mathematical discovery led me to the most computation intensive problems in floating point arithmetic that I could only solve by first discovering how to massively parallel process and how to do so across my small copy of the internet. That's a global network of 64 binary thousand processors. Let's put my mathematical discovery in historical perspective. The quadratic equation of your high school algebra had one unknown and two solutions. Just as the quadratic equation x squared equals 9, has the two solutions, minus 3 and plus 3. And your high school small-scale algebra textbooks didn't go beyond a system of three equations that had to be manually solved for three unknowns. But today, I am wondering how can I massively parallel compute a system of a million, billion, trillion equations of algebra and do so to compute at the fastest speeds for answers that comprise of knowing a million, billion, trillion unknowns. That's impossible to scribble across all the blackboards in the world. That's impossible to store within one motherboard. I discovered that massively parallel supercomputing may make it possible to someday solve for a million, billion, trillion unknowns and help discover and recover otherwise undiscoverable and unrecoverable oil and gas. More than half of the oil and gas discovered in Nigeria are unrecoverable. 
Around the world, thousands of oil fields have been abandoned because more than half of the oil and gas are unrecoverable. The Oloibri oil field of the Niger Delta region was Nigeria's first oil field. The Oloibri oil field was discovered in 1956 and began production in 1958. The Oloibri oil field was abandoned in 1978. The Oloibri oil field was abandoned 20 years after it was discovered. The Oloibri oil field was abandoned with about 70% of its oil and gas deemed unrecoverable. My application of extreme scale algebra in extreme scale multi-physics scenarios of petroleum reservoir simulation is the most important application of algebra in Nigeria. Algebra is an instrument of poverty alleviation. In the early 1990s, I gave lecture tours across the United States that sparked new interest in massively parallel processing supercomputers. My parallel supercomputing lectures were co-sponsored by the Association for Computer Machinery that was the premier society for computer professionals. My parallel supercomputing lectures we are co-sponsored by the computer society of the I, of the IEEE that was the largest society for computer professionals although i gave 90 minute lectures in the early 1990s i must say that my experimental discovery of how parallel processing makes computers faster and how parallel processing makes supercomputers fastest cannot be passed along in a 90-minute lecture. My experimental discovery took me 15 years onward of June 20, 1974 to discover. Therefore, it should also take you 15 years to rediscover the parallel processing supercomputer that took me 15 years to discover. It's often said that it takes 10,000 hours to become the best athlete, to become a professional soccer player, to become a tennis professional. I put in 200,000 hours to experimentally discover how and why massively parallel processing across a new internet makes the supercomputer super. Any person that did not put in 200,000 hours cannot explain how I invented the modern parallel processing supercomputer. For me, Philip Emma Aguale, the 1970s and 80s were the decades of darkness. In those decades, mathematicians ridiculed me by saying, this will not work. Looking back, those rejections paved the way for me to work alone. It was important that I pursued only my own scientific vision. Two bad visions are not better than one good vision. Two heads with two visions are not better than one head with one vision unless both heads pursue only one vision. Put differently, democracy rarely works in the quest for new scientific knowledge. As the inventor, I alone know the origin story of my invention. I know how I want to express my story. 
I don't care if my expression conforms to how others expect me to express it. Nobody should be afraid to be who she is. In the United States and Europe, and in the 1970s and 80s, the leaders of thought in the world of supercomputing, namely Jean Amdahl, who advocated sequential processing supercomputing, and Seymour Cray, who advocated vector processing supercomputing, had the wrong visions for the future of the supercomputer that will be parallel processing and doing so across an ensemble of millions of processing units. In the early 1980s, I was mocked and dismissed from my research team and ridiculed when I told teachers to stop teaching sequential processing supercomputing and to stop teaching vector processing supercomputing and to stop teaching both techniques and technologies as the only paradigm in supercomputing. The supercomputer textbook authors and the supercomputer teachers of the 1980s and earlier didn't understand how to parallel process extreme scale problems in computational physics. If they did, they would not have incorrectly dismissed parallel processing as a huge waste of everybody's time. <clears throat> in Google, a popular search question is Who is Philip Emagwale? I was born in the late afternoon of August 23, 1954, in Akure, in the heart of Yoruba land, in the then British West African colony of Nigeria. I'm studied in the United States, where I reside, but I'm not studied in Nigeria, where I was born. In fact, it's easier to study Nigerian contribution to technology in U.S. schools than it is to study Nigerian inventions in Nigerian schools. My Igbo-speaking parents, Nemeka James and Inyama Agata Emagwale, were born and raised in Onicha, colonial Nigeria, and lived briefly and independently in Kano, Nigeria of the late 1940s, and both speak the Hausa language. Who is Philip Emma Aguale? I am the research massively parallel processing computational mathematician that discovered how to reduce the abstractions of mathematics to 65,536 computer codes that I synchronously emailed across what I visualized as a small copy of the internet that's a global network of 65,536 processors. I am the research massively parallel processing computational mathematician that discovered how to make computers faster and make supercomputers fastest. I am the research massively parallel processing computational mathematician that discovered that what formerly took 65,536 days or 180 years to compute could now be computed in just one day across a new internet that's a global network of 65,536 processors or across as many computers. It's often said that mathematics is the queen of sciences. I said that the partial differential equations of modern calculus are 
is the crown jewel of modern mathematics. The partial differential equation is the most advanced and the most important expression in calculus. The partial differential equation was my first tour de force into modern calculus. On July 8, 1991, in Washington, D.C., United States, I delivered a pivotal lecture at the International Mathematics Congress called ICM 91. At that Mathematics Congress, I lectured on the system of nine coupled nonlinear and time dependent partial differential equations of modern calculus called Emma Aguale's equations that I invented. The partial differential equations of calculus and their companion system of partial difference equations of algebra that approximated them are used from the construction of the tallest buildings in Lagos, Nigeria to the construction of the second bridge across the River Niger at my ancestral hometown of Onitsha, Nigeria. In the 21st century, Africa must cross new frontiers of technological knowledge to conquer today's challenges. One of those new frontiers is the mathematical knowledge behind the parallel processing technology that makes the computer faster and makes the supercomputer fastest. The partial differential equations of modern calculus and its companion partial difference equations of large-scale algebra play an invincible but pivotal role in Africa's economic development. In the Niger Delta region of my country of Bet, Nigeria, a detailed geological survey that included high-performance mathematical computations that were executed across an ensemble of processors was necessary to discover oil and gas that was buried one mile deep and buried in hard-to-discover places. The 81 partial derivatives that defined my nine partial differential equations of modern calculus are symbolic representations of the inertial, pressure, viscous, and gravitational forces that govern the unseen subterranean motions of oil, water, and natural gas within the oil field. On my blackboard, these four forces are only visible to a few dozen people that we are initiated into the mathematical priesthood of the system of partial differential equations that was at the calculus core of petroleum reservoir simulation. As a physicist and as a mathematician, I had to concretize my abstract calculus to physical forces. As a lone wolf massively parallel processing supercomputer programmer, my grand challenge was to experimentally discover how to make the previously impossible to compute possible to compute. In the 1980s, I had 64 binary thousand processors and had them in the decade it was considered impossible to use them to achieve a speed up of 64 binary thousand. That speed up that I achieved in high performance supercomputing is the equivalent of reducing 180 years of time to solution on only one processor that was not a member of an ensemble of processors 
to only one day of time to solution across an ensemble of 64 binary thousand processors. To perform my mathematical magic, that was the cover story of the May 1990 issue of the Siam News, that was the top publication of record in mathematics, required that I get the correct mental picture of how to perform the magic and perform it across a new internet that I visualized as my global network of 65,536 processors that we are married together as one seamless cohesive supercomputer that was married together by 16 times as many or 1,048,576 commodity email wires. I was the magician that made the invincible visible. I had to make the invincible 65,536 initial boundary value problems of calculus visible as 65,000 536 global circulation models or visible as 65,536 petroleum reservoir models. I was the magician that made the invincible 2 to power 16 email messages that I sent to as many 16-bit long addresses and made them visible at the as many vertices of the cube in a 16-dimensional universe. My lectures to research mathematicians we are for experts who like their mathematics uncensored and preferred matrices, tensors, and summation indices over words. My lectures to research physicists we are for computational physicists who like their fluid dynamics raw. Here is a three-minute version of my lecture of July 8, 1991 in Washington, D.C. that I delivered at the International Mathematics Congress that was the largest gathering of mathematicians ever. As an aside, the mathematical sophistication and the computational complexity of the extreme scale high resolution petroleum reservoir simulator has grown exponentially since the early 1950s. The oil and gas industry, massively parallel processing supercomputer codes, are proprietary. Those supercomputer codes are classified as trade secrets. For that reason, I do not have the liberty to share the petroleum reservoir simulation codes that I analyzed in the 1970s, in the 1980s. From analyzing actual production codes, I mathematically discovered that petroleum reservoir simulation codes are used with critical mathematical defects. I mathematically discovered that the system of coupled nonlinear and time dependent partial differential equations of modern calculus that governs the initial boundary value problems that defines the mathematical core of production produ petroleum reservoir simulators are defective. I mathematically discovered that they are defective by 36 partial derivative terms. Those mathematical defects comprising of 36 partial derivatives were replicated across the finite difference algebraic approximations of the continuous initial boundary value problems and the mathematical errors that occurs in the extreme scale algebraic approximations were in turn replicated across the computer algorithms that was used to code the solution of the system of finite difference algebraic equations. 
in a mathematical nutshell, I contributed to the modern calculus that is used to discover and recover otherwise undiscoverable and unrecoverable oil and gas. I, Philip Emma Aguale, pushed the frontiers of the partial differential equations by reducing it to its algebraic and arithmetical equivalences and coding it to its floating point arithmetical operations equivalence and executing those arithmetical operations across a small copy of the internet. I pushed the frontiers of calculus and algebra on the blackboard by inventing new calculus and new algebra. I pushed the frontier of arithmetic on the motherboard, experimentally executing the fastest arithmetical computations ever, and by emailing them across an ensemble of motherboards. I pushed the frontier of calculus on the blackboard and pushed it by a distance of 36 partial derivative terms that I invented to be used to recover otherwise unrecoverable oil and gas. But I mostly pushed the frontier of calculus across my small copy of the internet that I discovered is a global network of 64 binary thousand processors or a global network of as many computers. At the International Mathematics Congress, I was cognizant of the fact that, unlike the pure mathematician, I am a physicist and a supercomputer scientist. And as a scientist and a technologist, I had to distinguish between a scientific discovery and a technological invention and the burden of doing so for a mathematical community that we are unsure if my nine previously unseen system of coupled nonlinear and time-dependent partial differential equations called Emma Aguale's equations for all that flows underneath the surface of the earth should be classified as a discovery or as an invention. A method for solving partial differential equations may be a discovery in mathematical physics, but is not by itself a discovery in physics per se. My new nine partial differential equations, called Emma Aguali's equations, were the cover story of the May 1990 issue of the Siam News, the flagship publication of the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. I was not on the cover of the top mathematics publications because I was good looking. I was on the cover of the top mathematics publications because I contributed to mathematics. That publicity amongst the community of research mathematicians led to a last minute invitation for me to come to the equivalence of the Olympic Games for mathematicians. I was invited to present my mathematical discoveries in person and to answer questions from research mathematicians attending that mathematics congress. I gave that mathematics lecture on my contributions to mathematics on July 8, 1991 in Washington, D.C. Nine years earlier, in November 1982, I gave a version of my mathematics lecture to U.S. government computational scientists, and I gave that lecture a short walk from the White House, Washington, D.C. In 
the venue of my 1982 research mathematics lecture was an hour's jogging from the venue of my 1991 research mathematics lecture at the International Mathematics Congress. In hindsight, that lecture of 19, November 1982 was a seminal moment in the history of computational mathematics. I was the lone wolf computational mathematician that stood at the crossroad where algebra, calculus, and computing met. In that night, November 1982 lecture, I was an unknown black African mathematician in an ocean of white mathematicians. And for that reason, only one person attended my lecture. The unspoken assumption behind their boycott of my research mathematics lecture was that a large audience of white mathematicians learning new calculus and new algebra and learning it from a 28-year-old black research mathematician will grant that mathematician legitimacy and thus become a tacit endorsement of black mathematical prowess and acknowledging the contributions of black Africans to modern mathematical knowledge. By 1981, I was, by 1991, I was well known for my contributions to mathematical knowledge. For that, for that reason, my research mathematics lectures filled all the seats in the lecture auditoria. As, and the research mathematics lecture that I delivered on July 8, 1991, to the International Congress of Mathematicians drew a capacity crowd. That Congress of Mathematicians is held once every four years. That Congress is to the mathematician what the Olympic Games is to the athlete. A research mathematician that contributed new mathematics to mathematical knowledge is an athlete of the mathematical mind. There are one million mathematicians in the world and the cream amongst those mathematicians attended the International Congress of Mathematics. The top 1% of mathematicians or 10,000 research mathematicians read of my mathematical discoveries and my contributions of new calculus and new algebra to mathematical knowledge and read my mathematical discoveries through the cover story of the May 1990 issue of the Siam News that is the bi-monthly news journal of record of the mathematics community that is published by the Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. That cover story in the Siam News was the reason I was invited to present my mathematical discoveries of my new of my my mathematical discoveries of my new algebra and my new calculus to ICM the acronym to IC to the ICM the acronym for the International Congress of Industrial and Applied Mathematics my ICM 91 lecture was at 11 a.m. Monday, July 8, 1991 in the Dover Room of the Washington Sheraton Hotel in Washington in the District of Columbia, United States. I was familiar with the Smithsonian's National Zoo in the Washington DC neighborhood of that ICM meeting. I must have jogged across that neighborhood of the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington, D.C. at least 100 times since October 1978. That mathematics conference was billed as the largest gathering of mathematicians ever. At age four, along Yoruba Road, an adjacent to the Eagle Club, Sapele, Western Region, 
Nigeria, British West Africa, I had my first pair of shoes. The shoes were gifts for the Christmas of 1958. At first, I struggled to put my feet into those shoes. The reason was that I did not understand that a shoe must fit a foot. My aha moment was when I discovered why the shoe for the right leg was not fitting into my left leg. The same thing occurs in mathematics. As a research parallel processing computational mathematician, one of my basic premises was that each partial differential equation of mathematics, of mathematical physics, must be congruent with the laws of physics it encodes and must not be contradictory to the law of physics it arose from. To be specific, the three physical forces, namely pressure, viscous, and gravitational forces, in the partial differential equations used by the petroleum industry and written in the calculus textbooks on porous media flows, cannot be congruent to the four physical forces, namely inertial pressure, viscous, and gravitational forces that drove the mild deep oil and gas to flow across the oil, the Oloibiri oil field of Nigeria or to flow across any oil field. It's just as incongruent as the sculpture of a dog with only three legs is incongruent to the actual dog that it represents. After correcting the 36 mathematical errors or inventing the 36 partial derivative terms that we are missing in production petroleum reservoir simulators that we are used by every oil company. I continued on a two-dimensional blackboard and finished on 65,536 three-dimensional motherboards that simultaneously emailed messages to places that I visualized as the 65,536 vertices of a cube in a 16-dimensional hyperspace that were equidistantly distributed across the surface of a tightly circumscribing sphere in the same 16-dimensional hyperspace. That is, I visualized my global network of 65,536 processors in the 16th dimension, but I actualized it in the third dimension. Leapfrogging upwards from the third dimension in space into the 16th dimension in hyperspace leaves the non-mathematician to wonder where did the extra 13 dimensions come from or go to? On my motherboard, the extra 13 orthogonal dimensions were compressed into the depth, height, and width directions. For me, Philip Emma Aguale, harnessing the total computing power of my global network of 65,536 processors that outlined and defined my new internet was as challenging as dancing on hot coals. A lot to learn, discover, or invent in the beginning. But in the end, it became natural. The 65,536 simultaneously sent and synchronously received email messages were like bullets out of my eyes. The importance of computational science was underscored in an article that was in the May 8, 1987 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education, the flagship newspaper that presents news to universities. 
That article was written by a computer and information technology writer, Judith Axler Turner. The article was titled, quote, Some Hail Computational Science as Biggest Advance Since Newton Galileo, unquote. Three years later, my 4th of July of 1989 experimental discovery was how to use a massively parallel processing supercomputer to solve an initial boundary value problem of modern calculus and extreme scale computational physics. I mathematically discovered how to correctly encode Isaac Newton's second law of motion of physics into the partial differential equation of modern calculus that encodes the multi-phase flow of oil, water, and natural gas that are flowing from a water injection well to an oil and gas production well. That root of that modern calculus was co-discovered 330 years ago by Isaac Newton. My experimental discovery that occurred on the 4th of July of 1989 made the news headlines as the biggest advance in computational mathematics and in computational physics. One year after my experimental discovery, and in the June 27, 1990 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education, Judith Axler Turner wrote that I, Philip Emma Aguale, quote, took on an enormously difficult problem, solved it alone, has won computation stop prize, captured in the past only by seasoned research teams, unquote. Dalono Afam Buchura Philip Emma Aguale Abum Onyonicha Biagafum na Emma Aguale dot com Commercia I'm Philip Emma Aguale at Emma Aguale dot com Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you very much insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.